Hi all, I have a very interesting game to show you from the FIDE Grand Prix. Mamadarov was playing white against Michael Adams. Let's see what happened in this game. This was on the 14th of May 2017. D4 from Mamadarov. Adams plays knight f6. And we seem to get a, a pretty standard opening position actually. Yeah, this has all been seen before in the live book so far so good it seems you know d5 is pretty standard here top move white took on d5 yep there's been hundreds of games with this sequence of moves even bleep b4 here trying to sort of maybe discourage c5 for a moment we have queen b3 a4 so a bit of uh queen side potential with b5 maybe or a5 uh black michael has played uh c6 here with a5 there's been a couple of games with b5 just locking things down this isn't as bad as it might seem in some respects it seems okay um in this game we have rook fba a temporary pawn sack that's taken and so black's like regaining the pawn it doesn't seem with uh, much penalty at all but actually something interesting is is going on here after queen c2 uh adams doesn't really want to take with the rook i think because of the tempo gain uh potential let's let's have a quick rook uh quick rook <laughs> let's have a quick look rook takes b6 Yeah, maybe this this is possible actually. There's always uh, there's queen c6 here, queen c queen takes c6 here. Why well, it's why well, slightly better, but we have uh, knight takes, and you'll notice that that knight was protecting that knight, and that knight's trying to defend h7 here. And with e4 now, there's an immediate threat of e5, so things have really livened up, and in fact. You know this h7 with this battery here i know it's simple crude stuff is actually a bit sensitive after knight takes now was played maybe this is maybe there's there's another way of playing the position but let's see knight takes okay h6 was chosen here possibly g6 might be in this case a little bit safer because what happens now let's see after h6 we have rook e1 with the immediate threat of winning the queen with bishop h7 check winning this queen queen moves out of the way but goes here perhaps better is queen f8 because here can you see what memdarov played in this position it's actually a really strong move if i give you five seconds Let's pause the video okay he played bishop h7 check now immediately if king h8 then this is mates mating after bishop f8 so the king goes to f8 and then we have knight e5 and in fact white has the potential for using this b4 not for the binds but for an attacking purpose of swinging a rook in via b3 here whilst this rook can make sure this is adequately defended this knight but this rook is free to swing in uh, to f3 so that could be sensitive we have knight d5 this could be uh the, the this 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 might not be uh, helping black knight d5 um that much but on the other hand uh, it's a, it's a difficult uh position here now things get really really interesting can you see what white plays here if i give you five seconds to pause the video okay knight takes f7 yeah with the king on f8 this is really now very interesting tactically one thing to notice is if king takes this doesn't happen then check and mate so king takes is not a good idea 
queen takes uh, is played you might think well what about what about uh, say knight takes b4 there's actually knight takes d6 here threatening mate so that queen is immune because of the checkmate here uh, this would be a disaster really if takes then queen e4 this is a disaster for black uh, so basically that's taken off uh, sorry after knight takes f7 queen takes f7 is played we have bishop g6 so if the queen moves we have that rook e8 checkmate so black seems to be losing uh, well the light squares control is is very sensitive so is he losing the queen well actually counterattacks on white's queen now Memdarov keeps the queens on actually he doesn't play queen takes f5 he plays bishop takes f5 so there's a threat here of bishop e4 getting out of the way for the queen to go into h7 we have knight takes b4 queen e4 and still this idea of bishop e6 and queen h7 is certainly on the cards here uh, and even if with rook e8 bishop e6 is possible still because it's reinforced uh, so we actually have this mechanism now knight d5 bishop e6 so the queen can go into h7 the light squares are pretty sensitive here for black with the king on f8 um, this is very dangerous this rook by the way uh, yeah has been hanging since knight d5 a little bit uh, so that's actually handled with just rook takes now and now queen h7 threatening queen g8 check and it's really difficult for black to defend this black tried g5 if for example bishop b4 bishop a3 is really strong here for example takes check and check uh check it's a nightmare yeah for example so g g5 was played after queen g8 adams resigned move 30 yeah he doesn't usually like lose games this quite quickly if it continued with king e7 check let's say bishop e5 we can prone this check and then take here and then actually get our get the queen out of the way to win uh the black king without getting back chromated because of that that knight's interrupting the b file here so this is just absolutely a winning we can just take the queen with check even yeah i i thought it was uh, a fascinating tactical encounter and actually memadarov i think he joined the 2800 club recently so he seems to be a new star to be watching to be on the lookout for he's been around for a while but his recent results have been very very impressive so this is one game that caught my attention recently i hope you liked it Comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks very much.